There was a report on HIV, the new transmissions, the burden in Kenya. And uh, we had um, the report being so much detailed to the counties, what's uh, the leading county when it comes to the new transmissions, which is the county with the highest burden of uh, HIV. Now, I'm going to narrow down to the new transmissions because this is alarming, especially when it comes to Nairobi, Kiambu, and Kenya within the Eastern Africa. Now, what you need to understand is uh, the new transmissions really become or come in because of negligence. So many things come to play. I'm not going to get there. There is a term that uh, the providers, the HIV healthcare providers, usually use, which I actually cannot disagree with. I differ. And um, it's not so much accurate, undetectable, intransmissible. Now, this is supposed to mean that if your viral load is undetectable, you're not going to be able to transmit this to other people. I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm going to give you uh, the facts that I know. Now, HIV viral load is when once they discover that you are HIV positive, there is this program whereby after a certain amount of time, maybe after six months, you go, you get your blood drawn, and then they detect or they just measure the amount of HIV viruses that's going to be found in that blood. And this will give um, the progress of how well your drugs are doing. So if you have like, for example, others on cowpeas, it means that you're not doing badly off, but then you need to bring that down to undetectable level, something that we call LDL, which is lower detectable levels. Now, we have the machine, a molecular machine, that usually do this. It comes and counts the number of copies that you have in a tiny amount of uh, the plasma, which is the blood, the liquid part of the blood. So they are going to measure the amount of uh, the HIV that you have there. And uh, when, uh, thus I'm using their words, if you are undetectable, which is LDL, meaning that in a certain amount, let's say we are talking about ML. In one ML, if you don't have, if you have, for example, a thousand copies per ML of uh, the HIV viruses, it means that uh, they are low. But if it's undetectable, it means that you might not be having the HIV viruses, which is not supposed to mean that you are negative, HIV negative. It might mean that... Uh, the ARVs are working so well at suppressing, even your immunity is working so well at suppressing HIV to a point here. In that one ml of blood, you're going to find four copies of HIV. So if it goes beyond that, let's say, for example, the machine that I'm using can be able to detect four copies. This is very specific. Four copies per microliter or per ml. You're going to pick ml. It's a little bit common. So if it can be able to pick that, then it's going to give you a number. But then if we ha you have only three copies, and it means it's not going to detect that. Chances are very, very high that it's not going to detect anything. You still have the copies, yes. The level or the rate of, at which you can, or the chances of you transmitting are low, but you still have a chance of transmitting that infection to other people because it doesn't mean you can even be having only one copy in a one microliter or that one ml of blood. You can be having just only that one copy, but suppose that when you're meeting that word partner, that's when you're going to give them um, the chance of that just one percent or that one uh, one copy. You're just going to give them. It just take you. It just only take you only one copy to get into someone's mucosa. It finds an antigen presenting cell. It grabs that particle. It gets inside and uh, it starts now creating new copies and that's a new transmission. So what I mean is that is. It's a very good phrase, yes, but it's not scientifically correct to say that because it's misleading. It doesn't give you the facts. The facts is you still have the copies that can be able to infect someone else. And when it comes to HIV, it's just because of, just by chances. It's not like, for example, there's something that we call infectious doses when it comes to the bacteria, but viruses tend to use uh, slightly different routes. Yes, we have viruses that will follow that, but trust me, HIV will just pick on it. If it, it can be able to just go into your mucosa or just find a cell that contains CD4 receptor, even just only one particle is enough to create that infection. So it's just based on the fact that um, maybe it's not, the chances are very low. So are you going to check the chances? So that's one thing.